Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. In this lesson, we're going to be working on using the treasure chest that we drew out and importing it into Game Maker and then making it an interactable object. We're just going to have some coins fall out and if you need the assets, uh, you can download them in the description below. So let's get started by creating a sprite. We'll call it SPS Treasure. And we're going to import, actually that's it, we'll say edit image images and import strip image we'll choose the treasure chest and we have one two three four five frames and it was, was it 64 by 32 we have a horizontal offset of two a vertical offset of two and then a horizontal separation of four and you can just kind of zoom in to make sure that your images are all within these squares. If they are, you can hit convert and just say yes to replace. So now we have our treasure chest. Let's import our coin, SPR coin as a sprite. And again, edit, image, import strip image, choose our coins. And we have 16 by 16. Let's get our offsets down first. We have one, seven frames. We'll hit convert. All right, now we have our coin. Now I'm going to close these as we're done with this. And I want to make a new object. And this object is going to be for the treasure itself, OBJ treasure. I can just assign the sprite. And actually, what I'm going to do is capitalize my T on this one. And we're going to use a create event. And the very first thing we want to say is no animation. So we could say image speed is going to be equal to zero. We also need a variable to tell us if this chest has been opened or not. So meaning that we can interact with this treasure chest or not. So we could say interact double equals true. So if this is set to false, then we can no longer interact with this chest. Uh, we also need to have um, this is almost a state, but we'll use a boolean. We need to have something to tell us that the treasure chest is opening. So we can say is opening equals false. And therefore, if this is false, we know it is closed. And we can say is opened equals false. And, you know, we might actually come back and make this a state machine, but I think this will be good for this tutorial for now. Okay, so we have the image speed at zero. Let's just go and place this object in a room. Let's place a couple of them here. Okay, I think that's good. Now we'll use a step event. And it will say if interactable is equal to false, then all we want to do is exit. Meaning that we can no longer interact with this, this object here. And next we'll say if, let's check our variable, if is opening, then we want to say our sprite image speed is equal to one. Then here we have to check to see if we've hit the final frame within our treasure. So we say if image index, let's round this image index, it's bigger than the image number let's say bigger or equal to then is opening it's going to be equal to false and is open equals true so in here this is where we want to also say image speed equals zero and image index equals image number I'm just thinking about this. We come in here, we can say whether we can interact with it. If we can't interact with it, then we just close it. Um, if it is closed, it's just going to be sitting there. If the player comes in and they do something and is opening a set to true, it sets the image speed to 1, which then runs the animation. The animation then hits the final frame in our sprite. We are no longer opening, and we say is open true, and then image speed zero and 
image index is the last one. And then actually we should set interactable to false as well. Now we need a way to open these images. And for now, let's just use a left down. Make sure we use mouse left down. So if they click down, we'll say is opening equals true. Okay, let's run the game and see what errors we have so far. All right, let's try and click one. And it kind of keeps going back and forth, okay. So if we go to step, I believe this is gonna be minus one. Okay, let's run this again. And we click on it. And it puts it back to zero. And the reason for that is down here, this is also minus one. So this is the last frame. Now we should be able to click on a treasure chest and have it open and stay open. Perfect. Okay, and we can't click on them anymore, so we don't have to worry about it. And what we could do is we could also take the interactive and we can go to variable definitions and add it in one of these and we'll set it to true. So what this does for us is in the room, say this top one, we could double click on it, go to variables, and we could change this to say interactive is now false. So if I don't run the bug, but I run the game, I should not be able to click on the interactable one. And I can, so <laughs> let's fix this. Okay, so in here, you know what we also need to do? Interactable is set to false. So let's debug this properly. Let's use a let's just say show debug message interactable and let's say and left down. Because in that room the variables I set interactive to false interactable. Okay. Let's try this one more time. It could be that because we have it in the creation code can't remember which is which so that is set to true so let's go back to our object treasure in the crate let's take away interactable and we'll just say this is found in the variables okay let's hit play again and see if that fixed this bug here so this one is true but this one is false so just be aware that um, you're going to have to watch out for that. Okay, so let's go to left down and remove that message. Okay, so the only other thing that we need to have happen is coin. So we'll say coin number. And we'll set this to 5. And it's just going to be an integer. It doesn't need to be a decimal. So it's a whole value. And when they click the item, if it's in the last frame, that is when we can spawn some coins. Or actually what we can do is say else. We can say if, you know what, let's keep it simple. Let's just spawn them when they're opened at the very bottom. So let's create a new object, object coin, assign the sprite, and let's make our sprite anchor bottom center. And we'll have a crate event. So in here, we definitely want animation, but we can say randomize. So we want our coins to be different. We could say rotation speed equals random range between five and 15. And we'll say scale equals random range between 0 0.2 and one and i think that's all we'll need so let's set the scale so that's x scale image x scale equals scale and image y scale equals scale so we're just giving the coins a different size and the rotation speed in the step event we'll say image angle plus equals rotation speed and depending on what we want to do, let's have the coins come out and then kind of fall down. So in there, we'll say gravity equals one. 
and we need a vertical speed and a horizontal speed and we also need a random direction so we'll just call this dir we'll say choose either minus one and one and i'll explain what we're doing here in just a second so our vertical speed we need a number random range between let's say 8 and four, 13 make sure that is a negative number and our horizontal speed between negative actually I guess we don't need direction if we're doing it this way negative 3 and 3 so we're going to have our coins go upwards and then our horizontal speed will coins will either go to the left or they'll go to the right and last but not least we'll say alpha speed equals random range 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 so that's pretty fast, 0 0.07. So in our step, we have our rotation. Now let's do our alpha, which is our fading. We'll say image alpha minus equals the alpha speed. If our image cannot be seen anymore, so it's less than zero, then we'll say instance destroy. So we want to make sure we get rid of ourselves. And now we have some movement. So we'll start with the um, y direction. So we'll say y plus equals, it's gonna be this vertical speed. Actually, that is almost right. This is gonna be, the vertical speed will be zero. And then we will have an initial speed, initial, vertical speed is going to be that and we have a you know what, we'll just leave horizontal speed as a full random number okay so our vertical speed is going to be set to our initial speed and then what's going to happen is our vertical speed plus equals gravity so it's going to go up and then slowly come down and then our y position is going to change based on the vertical speed of going up and coming down. And the X movement is pretty simple. We just need to do X plus equals horizontal speed. Okay, so if we didn't mess everything up, let's add a couple coins in here just to see what they look like. Hopefully they go up. Ah, there we go, they go up and come down. Okay, let's get rid of our coins. And on this treasure chest, we go to variables, let's say this is 10, and we will keep the rest at 5. So in our code for the step event, if we are on the last frame, then we want to spawn some coins here. And this is only going to run once because is opening is now set to false, so it's not going to keep spawning. So that means that we can say repeat for the coin number. I should have said number of coins, but that's fine. And what we want to do is say instance create layer x, y, so our current position of our chest. And we want it on instances object coin. And the only thing we're not really doing is everything is going to spawn at the location here and then it's going to go out what we probably want to do is have it spawn all along this side and that's easy to do all we have to do in here is we can just say var xx equals x minus sprite whoops not sprite sprite width or actually sorry that's going to be random range in between the x minus sprite width and x plus sprite width. And we want to make sure we divide those by two. So what is actually going to happen is it's going to say, okay, give me a random number starting from here, minus 16 pixels, because our entire treasure chest is 32. So it's going to take 16 over here, and then 16 over here, and choose a random number. So 
make sure we don't have any errors in our code. Looks okay, so let's hit play. Oh, you know what? I didn't assign I didn't assign it there. So let's use instance create layer xx, y instances, and then object coin. Okay, let's give this one more try. Alright, let's click it. And we have a couple coins there. Now they're not spawning over top. This one should be a bunch of coins. Uh, to get them to spawn over top, we can either say instance create depth, or what we can do is go to our room and create a new instances layer. And I'm just going to name this effects. So that means in our code, instead of going on instances, I want it to go on effects. So this layer is above instances, so it's going to be shown over top. So if we come in again, we cannot click the top one, we can click this one, and the coins jump out pretty nicely. All right, so now we have a interactable treasure chest. We didn't add a player, but you know what? I think this is pretty good. It gives an overall impression of how to do things. We've set it up so we can have a number of different coins in here. So we can also go to the room and say that uh, this item right here, um, for some crazy reason, we have 100 coins in there. And you know what? I think I did it. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't put it in the create event. So we've set it all up so we have different variables. So in each of our treasure chests, we can have a different amount of coins appear. Looks nice. We also have different fade speeds and rotations and stuff like that. All right, I'm going to end this video here. It's kind of a long one, and I think I've kind of rambled on. But I will include the uh, source and everything to download, and as well, you can find the assets in the description. Thanks for watching. 